I'm Madison Payne and this is Trooper. Welcome to another video. If you guys want to see more puppy content or you just want to see more of Trooper, be sure to subscribe. But in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys things that I wasn't expecting about having a puppy. Hopefully to have some tips to help you guys out because your girl was not ready and we're getting started right now. So you guys might notice we do have on our matching Adidas track suits. I got this in the mail, I don't know, maybe like a month ago. So it's a little snug on him now, but it was so cute in the back of it does say Adidas dog. I'll flash up a photo so you guys can see. I was a little nervous about ordering it, but the sizing is true to size, so I will link that below. But if you guys didn't see my last two puppy videos, this is Trooper. He is, even if you guys did, he is much bigger than the last time you guys saw him. Um, he's a sheep -a doodle so he is 75% Old English Sheepdog, and he is 25% Poodle. He is so cute and the little pint-sized love of my life, but I'm not even gonna lie, you guys. He... Is a handful um quite a bit that i was not prepared for and he's pretty hyper right now so i'm not really sure how much of this video he is willing to sit through so the first thing that i wasn't ready for in regards to having a puppy was all of the accidents if you guys watched my bringing home a puppy video i had a very like strict schedule <laughs> that i kept trooper on walking him every hour having his playtime certain time and he was pretty good about it and then out of nowhere, just started having accidents. I would take him outside and bring him in the house and he would immediately take him. I mean, and his turds have been huge, like from the beginning. I'm so sorry to be so blunt about it. But if you're gonna get a puppy, you need to know about these things. And sheep -a doodles I think because of the sheepdog side, are notoriously harder to train. He's very smart, super intelligent. That's definitely not the problem. But yeah, I mean, if he has to go, he will just go. So a fix for that that we have found is tethering him, where if he is going to be out, even if we've just walked him, we will walk him around and have him on a leash basically tethered to us. If your bands do have a belt loop, you can tie it to your belt loop, or you can just hold the leash is normally what I do. And that has worked out great with accidents because if I see him start to sniff around or if I see him looking like he's about to do a little business stop him and take him outside and he can go to the bathroom so that's tremendously helped it I mean we were going crazy around here being like what are we supposed to do with this dog like never have him out because he would go to the bathroom and now I want to say last week he's about to be four months I don't think I mentioned that um, and I want to say last week he only had one accident so tethering was also so helpful because it got him used to his leash he has no problem walking around on a leash and that seems to be a very common puppy problem that really Trooper never had. So the next thing that I was not prepared for was the barking and Trooper particularly has like this shrill, terrible bark. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, sir. And he really didn't bark whenever we first got him. I do think that was a behavior that we trained him to do. It was so unusual for him to bark. And a couple of times he barked his head off. So we let him out and he did immediately go to the bathroom. But I think we reinforced to him that if I bark, my humans will come. And so now he barks all of the time. So I would really encourage you guys, even if your puppy is barking, to stick to a schedule. We were walking him every hour. Now we walk him every two hours because he's about to be four months old. We should walk him even less than that. They say the rule of thumb for potty training is your dog's age is the number of hours that they can hold it or your dog's age in months is the number of hours they can hold it plus one. So Trooper should be able to hold it four to five hours. He'll be four months this week. But because he still is having accidents, they're rare, but since he's still having accidents, we're walking him every two hours. I would really encourage you guys to not come running when your dog barks or at least wait for them to start stop barking before you take them out because I really think that we have now trained that behavior. And really the only thing that's helped is us to not enforce it. Like I said, not go get him when he's barking. And we like to always keep noise on. So we do have an Alexa in our kitchen that's right next to his pen that we'll play music on or we'll play Netflix. Um, he really likes Secret Life of Pets. is <laughs> his favorite movie. And having noise going does seem to help him bark less often. And another thing that's really helped him with barking is to keep him entertained even if he is in his playpen. And puzzle toys have been so great for that. We almost solely just feed him with puzzle toys now. So we use Kongs, we use Westpaw, which I actually just got a new Westpaw in. So let me go get it to show y'all. A few moments later. Since I got these, he will probably come running. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, so puzzle toys have been a absolute lifesaver. You do have the traditional Kong, and we actually just upped his size. There's a smaller puppy size. Trooper's about 27 pounds, uh, or he was whenever we took him to the vet a few days ago. But 
This is the traditional Kong. Um, these are great. I do prefer wet the brand Westpaw over this, and I'll link everything in the description. Oh my gosh, he loves this Kong wobble. I'm gonna get to that in a second. I prefer Westpaw because it's a bigger opening, so um, especially for a puppy, I feel like the Kongs were a little bit harder for him. And what I really like about Westpaw is that the smaller sizes connect to the larger ones to form a new puzzle toy. So it's not like whenever he grows out of his other Kong, which like I said, he is a size down from this, um, There's he's gonna get so big that we're gonna have to just toss that one. I do like that you're not wasting the smaller one. He's going nuts. What he really loves is his Kong wobble, and they do have this for a puppy size as well. This is the larger one, because even though Trooper is a puppy he is big he like I said he's like 27 pounds and so you put the food inside of it you close it up and he has to knock it over he is sitting <laughs> you love this thing I wish you were showing people your face because you're so cute and so you just set it down I don't know if I could get it far enough you set it down and they play with it and when they knock it over food comes out now I only recommend a Kong wobble if you have a playpen or a certain enclosed area because they do kind of make a mess and with this playpen he will knock food out and so it can get a little bit messy i don't really mind because the next time i let him out he just runs over and eats you know the four or five little pellets i guess um a food that's left in there and it does keep him entertained all of these really keep him entertained and yeah it's really good for them too it's supposed to help them with their little puppy skills and being even more brilliant than they already are so I highly recommend Next thing I was definitely not ready for with getting a dog was the lack of sleep trooper would wake up at least once during the night and wake us up and he would wake up much earlier than me in the mornings like five o'clock in the morning my sleep schedule was so off I was exhausted all of the time puppies really are like babies where you sleep when they sleep so it's definitely something to think about especially in those first weeks that your sleep is going to be messed with now what we have really found to help is to keep him up in the evenings and to really wear him out before bed um, that way he would sleep through the night so what I mean is if we were all watching TV and it was 8 o'clock before we would just go ahead and like if he fell asleep on the couch with us we would let him go to sleep now we keep him up we're like trooper and we make sure that he's staying up because yeah if he gets a three hour nap and then you're trying to go to bed he's wide awake so that has really helped keeping him up in the evenings also wearing him out sometimes we'll we'll run him out right before bed just to make sure he's extra exhausted and that has made all the difference he's much better about his sleep schedule being synced to ours now so the next thing that i wasn't ready for is that you have to be home so much more now i had trooper for i think three weeks whenever all of this has happened and all the shutdown and everyone having to stay home for me i would still get him i'm a homebody anyway but i swear the week that I got him I got invited to do like five cool things that I actually wanted to do so it's just something to think about when you have a puppy you need to be prepared to be home more like I said the rest of the time has been fine because you know we can't go anywhere anyway but I know this video will be viewed more than just right now so the next thing that I wasn't prepared for is how active and hyper my puppy is this is obviously going to be very different depending on your puppy and your puppy breed but whenever I was looking to get a sheep -a doodle which is what trooper is if you guys missed me saying that earlier when I was looking into them, I did a lot of doodle research as opposed to sheep -a doodle research. And doodles are known to be either medium to low energy dogs, while sheep -a doodles are extremely high energy dogs. And so that's a major tip that I have for you guys. And if you get a rescue puppy to do the dog genetic testing, our vet actually offered it to us. It was a part of our puppy plan, which I'm gonna get into later in the video. Um, so even though we knew what trooper was, we went ahead and had the testing done too. So I think it's really important to know your breed. In his case, he is so active. I was actually talking to another sheepy mom about it and I was talking about how hyper trooper is and her dog's the same way and she calls it her dog having zoomies. So now that's what I call it whenever a trooper just goes absolutely insane and he really does. He requires so much attention. I do have to be really purposeful with him and make sure he gets a lot of energy out in the mornings. We go on a long morning walk that in the afternoon when it's shady in my backyard that we throw the ball for probably at least 30 minutes. The worst is on rain days because he can't go outside. So we've even, when it rains, we'll run him up and down the stairwell because he has to get that energy out. He behaves so much better whenever he releases his little, his little zoomies. He does become quite the bad puppy um, whenever he has too much pent up energy. 
Like I said, this is gonna be very subjective on your dog breed. So the next thing that I really wasn't prepared for with Trooper was how much he would cost. And I just wanna break down some of his expenses to stress to you guys that even a free dog is not free. And I hope you guys don't take this video as me trying to talk you out of a puppy. I absolutely love Trooper. He adds so much joy and happiness to my life. I just want you guys to know what you're getting into with a puppy so you can fully be prepared for it. Um, so I have written down his monthly expenses. And these can vary a little bit, but we do take him to Banfield. It's inside PetSmart. We love our vet. I'm sure people are going to have a lot of opinions in the comments that I take my dog to PetSmart vet, basically. But I absolutely love our vet. She's extremely knowledgeable with Trooper's breed. There's other Sheepoo Doodles um, that also see her, so I feel really great about the advice that she gives. And it's also a really great budget-friendly option. We pay around $40 a month, and I have really nothing but great things to say about them. And I would say that he costs around $50 a month to have grooming I do bathe him if you guys follow him over on Instagram you've seen all of his antics whenever I try to give him a bath if you want to check out his Instagram it's at trooper the dude but I bathe him once a week my vet told me that was fine to do no more than that but because he is so active he's outside a lot running around getting the ball we walk him a lot he does um, I do like to make sure that he stays clean it's also really good for <laughs> My audio is probably gonna sound so much like a panting dog every time he walks by So he does get a bath once a week I bathe him and then I take him to the groomers and then I bathe him and then I take him to the groomers So that's just with him getting groomed twice a month I would say is around $50 and I've already seen the prices on PetSmart for grooming I believe go up to $87 whenever he becomes a dog So grooming can be really pricey again That's gonna depend on your breed and what you want to do yourself. It's heartworm and flea pill is $20 a month I just bought a brand new bag of Royal Canin, Canine or Canin, I don't actually know which one it is. I just bought a bag of that. You guys gave me great advice in the comments. Most of you guys said you really liked that food. It's also what my vet recommended, so that's just what we went with. But a huge bag of it was $70. Not sure how long it will last because we just switched them over, but that's something to think about. I will say his food to me is worth every penny because he was having some stomach and diarrhea issues and since we switched him over, he's had none of that. So for him, that's been great, but it is something to think about, even the cost of food. And I'm probably really extra, if you guys can't tell, like with dog sweaters, but I probably spend at least $100 a month in Kongs or toys or dog accessories. Trooper easily can cost two to $300 a month, so it's just something to think about when you're getting a dog. Even a free dog is not free. Like I said, having a more budget-friendly vet with Banfield has really helped us out a lot and we cannot say enough good things about them. This is not sponsored by them. I wish it was though. <laughs> you guys see how many times he's gone for that wobble? I'm telling you, he loves the Kong wobble. But the last thing that I was not prepared for was how big they get so fast. Again, this is gonna really depend on your dog breed but trooper was so small and now he's so big so no matter what dog you get take so many photos when they're little as they will be bigger before you know it isn't that right isn't that right i feel like i've done a good job not using my puppy voice too much during this video i really can't say enough good things about him he really does bring so much joy into our life we actually are thinking about getting another one so if you guys have two dogs Please let me know below in the comments what your experience was. If you got them around the same time or you waited till one was out of the puppy phase, you waited years, please let me know. I would love to hear your experience. If you guys want to see more Trooper, be sure to look at this playlist right here. All of his puppy videos are linked. And be sure to follow him on Instagram over at Trooper the Dude. He is a pretty cute follow, if I do say so myself. And we will see you guys in our next video.